All right, here's our little tutorial. This first one's going to be over dominant traits. So here you go. Here would be a pedigree set up with just open and closed um, circles and squares. In this case, you're told that it's a dominant trait, right? So at least you know where you can start. So you assume dominance. How do you approach this? What's the first thing we do? Yes, just like we said in class, right? Set up what do your genotypes mean so that you don't get confused. In this case, right, anything with a dominant allele looks like the trait or is sick, is affected. Little d. Little d is wild type or normal. Okay? Little d, little d. Which ones are these guys? The not affected, the opens. So what would we do? We'd go immediately and fill in all of the open squares and open circles with the genotype we know. Right? That's all they can be. It's a dominant trait. Whoops, forgot that little guy right there. And so then what do we know about the other ones? Well, it depends. Sometimes we have to look at parents. Sometimes we have to look at the kids. So anyone that's colored in, we know has to have at least right one. Could have two. Might have the little allele. But at least one big D. So we can put that in for each one of these to help us remember. And then... Sometimes we might not know what their second allele is, and sometimes we would. Now this top guy over here in generation one, generation one, number three, right? We can't look at the parents because we don't know what they are, but we can look at the children. So because this cross of three and four results in some affected and some unaffected, we know that each one of these offspring got one of their little d's from their mom, where'd they get the other one? E -e -e. Yep, you guessed it, from dad. Which means dad has to have a little d. We know the big d for these guys came from the dad, so what is their other allele? Had to come from mom, what is it? You betcha, little d, little d. And what are the probabilities? All of these are one. That's all they can be. They can't be anything else. There's no possible way to be any other genotypes if it's a dominant trait. Okay? And then now we're going to look at this cross, right, and these offspring. Again, this fits because, right, and we know, I guess I should use the same colors, we know the big D for each of these came from the mom, and the only thing dad has to give away is the little D's. So guess what? Big D, little D. And there you have it. That's figuring out a pedigree for dominant traits. Thanks for listening, and I will see you, or talk to you, or talk at you probably very soon. Okay, guys, here's another pedigree. Uh, this time we want to know what is the probability that this diamond-shaped child, so not giving it either sex, is affected. Okay, so that's our question. We're looking for probability. Here, we're not told whether it's dominant or recessive. And if we scan this quickly, I think it could be either. I don't think there's any telltale sign of yes or no. So let's work it as dominant first, and then as recessive, and see if that works. Ooh, very tricky. Okay, so we're going to go dominant. If this were a dominant pedigree, right, again, let's do our big D, big D, big D, little D, blah, blah, blah. These guys are sick. These guys are wild type. And what does that mean? Anything that's an open going to be little d, little d. Okay, so let's do that all we can. That will help us, right, figure out what's going on. 
blah, blah, blah. And then again, we're going to look at parents and offspring. So if it's a dominant disease, we know, what do we know? Each one of these guys has to have at least one big D, right? And what's our question mark? That means, right, at least one big D, right? We don't care about the other one, but that's what it has to have. So what's the probability of that guy getting at least one big D? So again, let's start up here, generation one, two, and three. And in order for these children over here to exist, this dad has to be heterozygous, okay? And in order for these daughters right here to exist with this mother, they have to be heterozygous also. So then we come to this cross right here, right? So, hmm, hmm, yep, that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. What about these guys? Had to get the big D from mom. Have to get a little D from dad. That's all there is. So then what's the probability of this from that? Is this a one here? What's the probability of that guy? It's one. Has to be that. That's the only thing it can be with these parents. And this guy's a one, right? Because he's an open square. Has to be. That's all it can be. Okay? So, that's just an easy little Punnett square, which we don't really need to draw because we have this memorized, but we're going to draw it just in case. Right? And so what is the probability of this guy... And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, probability of a dominant trait in this pedigree. Okay, you with me? Let's do the same thing, but let's call it recessive, since this pedigree seems to work for either. Big R, big R, big R, little r, little r, little r. This one is sick or closed, right? These guys are both wild type, okay? Open. So what do we know? We know all of these guys have to be little r, little r, right? Which means that guy has to be little r, little r, right? That's our question mark. It's a probability of that happening. Again, in order for these guys to be open, they have to have at least one big R. So let's give them all at least one big R. And let's start up here, generation one, generation two, generation three. Let's look at this guy. Okay, she's got kids that are affected and unaffected. If the big R came from mom, dad's only got little R's. What does that have to be? Little R's. Okay, what does this mom have to be in order to have this child or this child? Mm-hmm little r. So again, probability is one. Have, has to be that. Has to be that. What about this side? We don't know anything about these guys, right? Nobody's sick. We don't have any siblings. And so this is like a separate family marrying in, right? So we have to assume big r, big r, right? There's nothing to tell us otherwise. So in a recessive rare recessive disorder. All are going to be rare unless I tell you otherwise. Right? That's the probability. And that's a one because that's our assumption. We have to make that marrying in not from a stupid, um, what am I saying? Support group, right? Okay. So, <laughs> this one has to be big R, little r, right? But, oh, oh my goodness. If this one got the big R here, and this one got a little, how does this exist, right? If this really is the father. Hmm. So now we have to use our rule that, right, we go by the children. This, this, these children right here negated our marrying in and not being affected and not being in a support group and tells us, that this one really does have a little r. It has to, right? One of the little r's came from mom, one came from dad, right? Can't get both of your alleles from one parent or the other because of the law of segregation. Okay, 
So then, what does that mean about, if we were asked about generation one, right? That means that, right, one of these guys has to at least have a little r, right? It could be one or the other, right? Or it could be this one. Ah, ah, help me. This one over here, right? So it doesn't, these don't have to be heterozygous, but one of them has to have a little r, right? And the other can either have the little r or not, right? So draw out your Punnett square if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, because I'm moving on. Okay, because we don't really care about them. They're just the grandparents. Unless in the exam you're asked about those guys. But then I'd have to give you more information in order to figure out if they're both heterozygous or one's homozygous. Because you can't tell from this one. Okay, so again, this Yahoo over here is marrying in. So if we assumed that this guy is big R, big R marrying in, then it's 0% probability that that one has little r, little r, right? Because a cross between these two guys is going to give you all big r, little r, open, not sick. So this really is a stupid pedigree for a rare recessive disorder because it's a 0% it's a, um, probability. Unless I told you something about this stupid guy, like, oh, they met him at a support group, blah, 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 and we could make an assumption that this is a little r, or I tell you his mother is an always a closed circle and his father, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So that's it. That's just using the same pedigree to do both. So technically it could be either dominant or recessive. Not enough information to tell if I was asking you to call it one or the other. Okay, guys, there's another one. I hope you enjoyed it. There might be more. I hope so. See you soon.